Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of All Angles. I'm Dion Jackson Mill and a very special welcome to our viewers on OneSpotMedia.com. So what happens or what should happen when students underperform academically? Lots of controversy over policy that was revealed that Calabar has been carrying out, but also lots of support for the school. We're going to be talking through those issues this evening and joining me in studio, we have the chairman of Calabar High School, the Reverend Carl Johnson, also with us, retired high school principal and education consultant Esther Tyson and opposition spokesman on education the Reverend Ronald Thwaites. Just before we go to our guests though we have this overview. Fifth form represents a major milestone in the secondary school experience. However, the all-boys Calabar High and all-girls Merle Grove High are telling students they must achieve a certain grade before they're promoted to fifth form. For example, Calabar insists on a 60% average to enter the fifth form program. Failing that, they must enroll in mandatory remedial classes at a cost. It is either that or they find themselves another school. The education minister, based on his investigation, confirmed that the practice is prevalent among traditional high schools in the corporate area. It is also one that the Jamaica Teachers Association and the National Parent Teacher Association endorse. We fully support what they are doing at Calabar, the administration at Calabar, because the time is here and it's nothing new that we need to set very high standards for our students and have them work towards those standards and not the other way around. What I'll add to that, another layer would add to that, is that we, the administration, parents, and the, the guidance counselor should work with those students who have not reached that standard to redirect them so in other areas and other places so that they can optimize their potential. When a child performs excellently, and that food for me gets a 60 average, then this question has to be exercised. When a child performs, um, you know, low average and increase to 60 in food form, then this question has to be exercised as well. But when a child consistently performs very low and that food form going into exams, the average is very, very low, then something has to be done. Former Education Minister Ronald Thwaites also supports the principals. Even principals who do not have such a policy in place have told us off the record that they understand why schools resort to expulsion. But the Education Minister Real Reed has told the schools to stop it at once. As a policy, we couldn't countenance in a willing in a way students being managed out of the school system. We have to manage them into programs that best cater to their needs and interests. And we have to do everything that is possible and necessary to make sure every child can learn and every child achieve their full potential in the system. Quoting Section 34 and 37 of the regulations, the schools were instructed to admit the students. 34 speaks to pursuant to a board decision that the parent could appeal in the first instance. And then in 37, it, it, it quite very clearly says that where you are considering um, expulsion, it has to be certainly um, after a number of interventions that have taken place before that is to be contemplated. But even so, you'd have to follow. The regulation. These are the same regulations some have suggested Mr. Reed breached by allegedly presiding over a similar regime while he was principal at Jamaica College. I hear that argument and, and that was not a, a, a policy that was pursued in that, in that way. Students who um, we had to discipline or students who had disciplinary um, problems not, not because of academic underperformance, what I provided was alternate pathway for those students. That's why I cannot talk about it, that those students need more time, not less time. One of the suggestions being circulated is that schools should provide more interventions. Rural Reed pushed back at the idea that schools do not have the requisite resources. So it is now a matter of whether to promote students socially or by merit. The society needs to appreciate that the chronological age is also an issue. You can't have a situation where um, the average age is so much less than the actual um, nominal age of our student. It creates a lot of problems. So when we debate this issue about whether we should have social promotion or promotion on merit, 
it has to be redefined that the best practice in the world is to transition with support. The education minister is also advocating that students be channeled into areas of interest. This is inherent in what the ministry has in place so that all our children don't have to be uh, pursuing the same thing if they feel they're not interested in that particular area, if they're not so inclined, because all of these are, are factors. Sometimes why students are viewed to be underperforming is because the menu that we offer to them are very limited. Whatever the choice, expulsion is to be the last resort. Failing that, principals could face consequences. We must get to the state where there are consequences for our breach of policy. So I'm saying uh, so respectfully to my colleagues, you can't take the position you're going to buck the ministry's policy and get an organ of chaos. You can't get public funds and operate a public education institution and don't follow a directive that can't work. And to make sure that that is very clear, we will amend the regulations to ensure that it's an offense to disregard and not follow government policy and directive. Mr. Reed said this is particularly so as legislation seeking to license teachers is imminent. Okay, well, in addition, the minister there was quoting Regulation 34 and 37 when speak to procedure. Regulation 30 speaks to the basis on which a school can ask a student to leave. And there are only two bases, um, which are conduct of such a nature that the presence of the student has a detrimental effect on the institution. And also, if a student has injured another mem a member of staff or another student. So having said all of that, uh, Reverend Johnson, let me start with you first of all. I don't think there is anyone at all, you know, who wouldn't applaud the, the desire by any school to, to lift standards, to help students perform better. So I don't think there is any disagreement with that aspect of it at all. But when you reach a stage where you're asking students to leave, how is that not pushing the problem, quote unquote, out of your school and saying somebody else deal with this? Well, you have to ask yourself the question, how would we have gotten there? And I agree with you, and in fact, the Calabar High School Board supports the fact that expulsion is clearly defined in the code. And this, that has brought us fame in recent days. Or infamy. <laughs> fame. Fame in recent days. Um, was never to be seen as expulsion. Never. That's a spin the school is putting on. No, 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 no. The, I, the I essence put it of it ago. is that you're asking a child with to respect, leave the with, school. With respect, with respect. Let me, let me make my point. Um, the board that I chair has loathed the direction towards expulsion. In fact, I was trying to remember when last the personal committee sat to deal with a matter like this. What we have done. Hold on, you, I'll let you tell us when we come back because yeah. we're at break. But let me just make the, yes, I <laughs> But let me just make the point, expulsion by any other name is expulsion nonetheless, but we'll pick up with that when we come back. Remember, you can tweet us, TVJ All Angus is our hashtag. Text me as well, 895 Give us your first name, give us your location. Want to hear your views on this, soon come.